It'd be cool to get this podcast rolling, George. All right, let's get it rolling, baby. Welcome into the Sports on Tap Brothers podcast. It is hookah, shisha edition, whatever you call it. Two Middle Eastern brothers here enjoying life. I'm Sammy, uh, little bro. I'm George, big bro. Welcome on into the podcast. Got a little exciting little format for you doing something fun today, so looking forward to that. A cool topic. We got fresh haircuts, so if you're listening on the podcast, go check it out on YouTube if you want as well. YouTube.com slash the sports on tap and everywhere on social media that's where we're at so check it out and uh george you ready to rock and roll ready to rock and roll baby let's do it this is the sports on tap brothers podcast george and sammy want you to always remember sports are fun let's rock All right, so today our new format, it's kind of a slow season in sports in general. So I try to figure out something we can do. I mean, everyone, we already talked about the draft and everyone's talking about the draft and coming free agency. It's all rumors right now. So we're not a rumor mill. We're not insiders. We just like sports and we like talking sports. So here's the thing. Today we decided to build the all-time team, every single position in three major sports. We're talking uh, NFL, when we're saying quarterback, running back, offensive lineman, linebacker, corner, safety. Um, then we go to the MLB, every single position, and NBA, point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. So that's how we're going to start it off today. And Sammy, which one do you want to do first? Do you want to do the lowest hanging fruit, which is NBA, or do you want to start with, with something a little more complicated like Major League Baseball? Let's start with NBA. I like that. Let's go from easiest to hardest. I think that would be... Basketball, baseball will end with football because football, we have 11 on each side, right? Mm-hmm. 11 on, well, no, not necessarily because we're going to just do one offensive lineman, one linebacker. We're not going to go like middle, left, okay. right. So I have like 16 still or something. Yeah. Whatever. So. No, like 12. It'll be the same amount as baseball. Yeah. Okay, let's go basketball, football. No, let's go basketball, baseball, football. All right, we'll leave NFL All for last. Yeah. All right, basketball. Well, let's start with, let's go center to point guard. Oh, I like that. All right, the greatest center of all time. And I think we got, like, the usual suspects. You got the Bill Russells, Will Chamberman, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Shaq, Hakeem. Yeah, and I guess, are we tr- are we building for versatility here, too? Because, you know, the other day I was building my all-time f- top five with our our good friend, Ref Daniel. Shout out to Ref Daniel. He'll be an NBA ref one day. You'll see him on this podcast. We'll, we'll be talking some hoops one day. Uh, talking questionable calls all yeah. the time. Like, well, what was that call on LeBron you made? No, no, uh, Bronny, sorry. LeBron probably out of the league by then. Maybe not. I was going to say. Uh, let's do, like, are we doing, because, you know, some people might throw Bill Russell most championship, but might, some people might say, like, I need a durable big man like Shaq. I've seen him play more. Like, how, how are we, you know, if, we're, if we have Durant and Wilt and somebody else, we have an all-time skinny team, or are we just going, like, the best five to build the team or the best player? I, I say best five. Let's say okay. pretend it's, like, an all-NBA team. Like, who are the the best center of all time? Okay. What, what is your first pick? Because for me, I'm considering also, like, Shaq, for me, still to this day, if we're not considering what Wilt did in some odd times in the NBA, is like probably the most dominant player for a two or three year stretch we've ever seen in the history of the NBA. Yeah, and then we have Kareem. I mean, I I, I don't think it's Shaq. I mean, if you go look at all time lists, Shaq hovers around ten. Bill Russell, Wilt, and Kareem on most all time lists are higher, like universally higher. So I think Shaq, unfortunately, even though he's the best center of our generation. I think we're going to have to leave him out of this one because if we're going to only go recency of what we've seen, it's going to be at all. And this team's going to be basically guys that we've all, we've all seen. So I, I think it's between Bill Russell, Kareem, and Wilt. All right, and then you excluded one of my guys. I'll exclude one of yours. I'm going to exclude, no offense, to the late, great Bill Russell. Okay, that's fair. Uh, Mercer Island resident for those Seattle people. I know we got a good Seattle audience on our podcast a lot of times because we have our Seattle sports podcast as well. Um, he lived in Mercer Island for a long time. Uh, a great NBA player, so many rings. But if I'm just comparing, like, the numbers to, like, a Wilt or a Kareem, I don't think Bill Russell necessarily can outdo that. I would personally have Shaq over Bill Russell even. So I'm going to hex out Bill Russell if you're cool with that. I am cool with that, but my only thing is I know the numbers might not seem, like, that crazy for Bill, but we also didn't keep track of blocks back then. And some people say he averaged five, six blocks a game. They say. They say. I have no idea. Okay. 
But I'm, but I'm so, still going to go between yeah, Wilton. I, I'm going to be between Wilton, Kareem, and God, I feel like Wilt, despite being universally known as a top 10 player of all time, is maybe the most underrated NBA player of all time. Like, we kind of just poo-poo his numbers where he was averaging 50 fucking points a game. We poo-poo uh, that he did win two championships. Like, that's no joke. We do poo-poo the fact that he averaged, like, one year he led the league in assists. He had a 100-point game. Kareem has more championships. Kareem was, like, the LeBron before LeBron because he was known, like, in high school, in college, and stuff that he's, in, like, the great one. So... I guess I lean Kareem, but I just do want to point out that Wilt is underrated. Yeah, and I brought up the stats just because it's fun to look at the stats. When you look at just stats, let's say you never watched basketball before, you're like, Kareem's the best player of all time. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Not Kareem, sorry. Wilt. Wilt. Uh, Kareem's up there, obviously, too. Kareem's career average is 24.6 points per game and 11.2 rebounds. And then let me look at those blocks. Uh, 2.6 blocks, okay? With his best season, let's say, being one of the years where he had 34.8 and 16.6 rebounds. Pretty good. Okay? But let's go to Wilt for a second. 30.1 points per game. This is career. Yeah. 22.9 rebounds and 4.5 assists. And averaged, let's go to blocks again here. Oh, they didn't, they didn't count blocks. They didn't count blocks. But let's just look at, <laughs> let's look at some of these stats, okay? I'm, I'm going to go through his highlighted ones. You know, basketball reference highlights, yeah. some of the, the like record-breaking numbers. Rookie year, 37 points, 27 rebounds. Second year, 38.4, 27 rebounds. Uh, year three, 50.4 points per game and 25 rebounds. That was his <laughs> third most rebounds ever, his most points ever. The fourth year in the NBA, 44 points and 24 rebounds per game. Can you go back to his third year and tell me how many minutes a game he played? Because it's pretty funny. Uh, he played 48.5 minutes a game. Yeah, he played every minute plus overtimes. Yeah, I was about to say, where's that point five? Yeah, from overtimes. Was it 82 games in? That, that uh, he played 80. He play, it was 80 game season, and there was o- overtimes. He played every minute of overtime that his team went to. Well. Yeah, Let, let's go through that third year one more time here. 80 point, 80 minutes, I don't know, sorry. 80 games, 48.5 minutes per game. He was 20 for 39 shooting at 50%. Uh, he was averaging 61 from the free throw, but who cares? And he averaged 50.4 points per game and 25.7 rebounds. Yeah, that's pretty insane numbers. And with, he had 100 with, points. With three assists. So we're talking about like a total of like 80 total stats. With rebounds and with just rebounds and points, we're talking about 75 like total number of like your statistics. All right. So we all know Kareem is like universally known as one of the greatest players of all time, too. But who, who do you put? I'm putting Wilt. I'll put Wilt too, man. This is go Wilt. I, don't you think he might be a little underrated at this point? Yeah, because we'll never in our lives see a guy score 100 points in a game, and we'll never, ever, guaranteed, Jokic is the most dominant big we've seen in 20 years. We'll never see a guy average anywhere near 25 or 27 rebounds or 50 points in 25 rebounds. Never. Ever. We might never see a guy have a 15-25 night. No. <laughs> you know, well, Kevin loves at that 30 30 night. I don't think we've even been close to like a 30. We have like some Jokic 20 20 or like 30 and 20. But yeah, a, a 50, 30 30 night was insane. A 50 25 average. That's nuts, dude. Okay, it's Wilt. Perfect. Power forward. I think this one's easy. Tim Duncan? Tim Duncan is the power forward. Yeah. Well, who else is on the list? Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett. It depends if you want to put like, some people might be like, oh, Lajuan was kind of a power forward center. It depends, like how you how you frame him, how you frame him. But he's a power forward. You know who's the next closest to me than from Tim Duncan? Almost is like Giannis is up there even now. Like, yeah, Giannis is up there. Uh, Dirk. You know, there's two positions. Moses Malone and Dirk could be considered small forward too, if you really want. In some ways, power forward and shooting guard. Those are two that you know I realized a lot of times is. There's not that many to compare. Like, people were talking about Dwayne Wade at shooting guard as, like, a top five or six. Yeah. Even point guard doesn't have that many to compare. No, it doesn't, uh, actually. Center is one of the most dominant. Small forward has a lot. Power forward is, I think, clearly Tim Duncan. Yeah, it's Tim Duncan, man. I, I, I think it's pretty easy there. It's Tim Duncan. All right. And I think the next two are very easy, too. Yeah, small forward. Uh, I think it's Paul George is better than Brandon Miller. Uh, oh, that, that's weird. I was going to go with uh, Danny Granger. Oh, Danny Granger was sick, dude. 
that uh, him and Roy Hibbert, best small forward center duo in the league that year? Maybe he was power forward. It's Paul George. Was, uh, Paul George was shooting guard, George. Was he shooting on that, team. on that team? Yeah, he was. Okay, but yeah, it's it's definitely LeBron James. It's LeBron James. And like, let's just move on to Michael Jordan, that shooting guard, yeah. and get on to the other fun one. Point guard and uh, center are the most fun ones. Yep. I think right now, let's just rephrase that or let's restate that without the jokes is I think it's pretty clear from power forward, small forward, shooting guard, in this generation, it'd be hard to argue Tim Duncan, LeBron, Jordan. Yep, those are the three. And I don't think many people would argue with that, right? Uh, if you argue with that, you're just trying to be cute, and th- we're not trying to be cute right now. Exactly. Point guard. All right, point guard. Well, the first two, t- for me, George, that come to mind are Steph Curry and Magic Johnson. Me too, Steph, Magic. Um, Isaiah Thomas, honorable mention. John Stockton, honorable mention. And then if he won a championship, Chris Paul would be on that list. Yeah, yeah. Oscar Robinson. Yeah, Oscar, another underrated, kind of like a wilt, but not as good, obviously, but another extremely underrated one. Um, you have to have, uh, you have to have it be Curry or Magic. I feel like though. Yeah, and I think it's Magic. I love Curry. Magic went to nine finals. Magic is that like he was the point guard of the future before the future even a- arrived. Six foot nine point guard, nine NBA finals, came into the league and just dominated from game day one. I think they won the NBA finals his first year and he was NBA finals MVP his first year. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add this about Magic. I don't think LeBron James would exist without a Magic Johnson because I think LeBron would have grown up at his size and people would have been like, no, you can't dribble. You can't yeah. pass. You can't do this. You post up only. Yeah, you're six foot nine. Like, why are you playing? Or, or at least be like a power forward, right? Like, be a Tim Duncan. Like, you're not a center you're, or you're a center or power forward. I don't know if LeBron exists. I don't know without LeBron then if a Giannis type of guy exists. Even a Jokic who's a center that brings the ball up and yeah. shoots. I don't think any of these people would exist without 16, like an RV, nine. like Arvidas Sabonis. Yeah, they wouldn't exist, bro. I saw this clip of that. I mean, he has nothing to do with this list, but Arvidas Sabonis back when he was like 22 years old, when he wasn't able to go to them. Yeah, they weren't. He wasn't allowed to because Yugoslavia is like, no, you're staying here. And it was the FIBA World Championship against the United States team, and the clip was him dunking on David Robinson on a putback dunk, and the dude was just so nasty. And he looked like the best player on the court, like just watching those clips. And I was like, man, if that guy played in the NBA, I wonder what we'd be saying about him. Like, I mean, down the line. even with his injuries in Portland and, you know, being 30, 32 years old, yeah. still very high quality basketball. Player. Amazing basketball player. Great, great passing big man. Jokic before Jokic. Yeah. But I still think without LeBron or without Magic, a Jokic wouldn't exist either. Did you think we'd have an Arvita Sabonis reference on this podcast today? You never know because we could have brought up like a Victor Wembanyama and like these like seven foot two three true, guys. True. Um, you know where does Victor fit on this list, George? That's the big question. What, what position is Victor Wembanyama? Everything. Like, what's he going to be listed as? Small C- center. Center. I mean, I think once you're over seven two, you don't have a choice. You're just listed as a center. By the way, his uh, his barefoot measurement came out today. Seven three and a half. Yeah. So with shoes, he's clearly seven four and a half or seven five. That's fucking insane. Insane. All right, so it's Magic, though? Yeah. So, pretty simply, we're going Wilt, Duncan, LeBron, Jordan, and Magic. All right, love it. That team would win 82 games if they were all playing 82 games. All right, on to baseball? On to baseball. This was a little bit harder. This is very hard. Why I'm bringing up, like, best baseball players by position, just to see what other people say. Yeah, and I'm going to start off with catcher here, because that's, like, the, you know, it's a catcher. Okay. Um... And I am going to go with the best catcher of all time being Johnny Bench of the Cincinnati Reds. Okay. I'm going to go off a Bleach Report list just for fun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, their number one is John Gibson. John Gibson. Sorry. Is yeah. Yogi Berra is up there too, I'm sure. They call him the so-called Black Babe Ruth, accumulated lifetime average of 359. We played in the Negro Leagues. Correct. Yeah, let's talk about Major League Baseball. I don't. I don't know if we should. Like, I, it's hard to say about the Negro Leagues. We never saw them play against the highest competition, unfortunately. Well, their second is Johnny Bench. Who's their third? There is no third. There's only honorable mentions. Okay. Johnny Bench is. Uh, should I look up the stats? Sure. Let's look up the stats. Yogi Berra is up there too. His career stats are two ninety two seventy six. The Mariners three hundred and. 90 home runs. The Mariners would kill for someone who had 276. For real. Two-time MVP. Like, 
10 11 time all-star um clearly regarded as one of the top two or three of them. all right let's go with johnny bench let's just stick with johnny bench. all right let's go to first base and do you have anyone in mind i already i have my lou first gehrig. yeah i have lou gehrig yep. as well lou uh, gehrig pretty easy he won two mvps batted 340 13 straight seasons with 100 plus rbis including an American League record in 1931 of 184 RBIs. Did you tell me he batted 340 for his career? Yes. That's insane. Yeah. And two MVPs. He is a seven-time All-Star, won the Triple Crown in 1934, and held the record for most consecutive games played for 56 years, which was 2,130 straight games. That was before modern medicine. That was before my Wow, that's pretty crazy, dude. And unfortunately, he is known as Lou Gehrig, diseased ALS. Yep. Uh, I feel like, He's obviously the biggest name ever at first base and uh, one of the most impactful athletes, probably one of the most impactful names we have even to today in the world. Yeah, because of his disease that unfortunately, and he had the greatest speech today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of this earth as he was announcing his retirement due to Lou Gehrig disease. Yeah, announcing this like soon death pretty much. Yeah, he's like the death wish. So yeah, Lou Lou Gehrig at first uh, base. Uh, second base, Jack. Well, really quick, I was just gonna tell you the number two on the list was Jimmy Fox on on. Jimmy Fox was really good. Boston Red Sox. Second hey, base. All right, second base, Jackie Robinson. They don't have Jackie Robinson on their list. Okay. They have Rogers Horns. Roger Hornsby. Hornsby yeah. He batted uh, three fifty eight for his career, two MVPs, two triple crowns, seven batting titles. Was the first National League player ever to hit 40 home runs in a season. Okay. Who else is on the list? Ty Collins. Eddie, Eddie Collins. So I guess it's Roger Hornsby. I guess, I mean, I guess Jackie also played a little bit of a third base. I don't know if they have him in a different position. No, but I'm putting Jackie Robinson. Yeah, let's put Jackie on there. Because there's sometimes, at the end of the day, let's just go to what we said about basketball. When you look at Steph Curry versus Magic Johnson, yeah. like, is Steph Curry maybe better at basketball now than Magic Johnson? Maybe. But, like, the impact of what Magic Johnson did in the championships and, like, who Magic Johnson is gives you that, like, you're the best ever. Even, like, Michael Jordan sometimes, right? Like, we're not saying when Michael Jordan goes down or LeBron James even goes down as, like, the best players of all time, that doesn't mean nobody ever is going to, like, pass him in skill, but sometimes your impact just leaves a certain legacy. Exactly. I think Jackie Robinson fits that legacy. I couldn't agree more. Uh, Shortstop. God. Can I tell you the two on the list? Hey, can I guess them? Yep. Uh, Derek Jeter. Nope. No. Uh, Cal Ripken Jr. He's second. And first. Think about an expensive baseball card. Alex Rodriguez? He's a third. Yeah, but he played shortstop for the Mariners and Rangers. I'm just telling you. It's third base. Okay, yeah. Uh, expensive baseball card. Honus Wagner? Correct. Honus Wagner's number one on the list there with a... Uh, he was part of the first Hall of Fame class, getting the second most votes behind Ty Cobb and ahead of Babe Ruth. Okay. <laughs> he was a 327 hitter, won eight batting titles with 3,415 career hits. He also led the league in solemn bases four times. He was also a great fielder, but gold gloves were not given out when he played. Okay. And number two is Cal Ripken, which Cal Ripken, I think, is the one who beat uh, Lou Gehrig's most played games ever, right? Yeah, the longest uh, streak ever yeah. for most games played. They beat Lou Gehrig, I think. You know, which is pretty remarkable if you think about it. Lou Gehrig. Garrick had his disease. He still played a long time, and he never missed a game. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, the most ever through, most games ever played in a row until Cal Ripken came. Cal Ripken, man, that story of him in uh, who's that actor? Kevin Costner. Yeah, they say it's a lie, but they say it's a lie. But if you haven't looked up that story, go look it up. Um, who was next? Third. Well, who would we pick? Honus Wagner or Cal Ripken? Oh. I think that like my qualification is if you receive more Hall of Fame votes than Babe Ruth, you you get you get it. All right, and he was, but it's probably it's the most expensive baseball card of all time. Yeah, it is at least seven now. million dollars. Yeah, so let's go Honus Wagner. Yeah, yeah. offense to Cal Ripken. All right, third base is an interesting one because um, he played a little bit at third base, but I think he also played a little bit of left field. at Pete Rose at third, he did not make the Bleacher Report list, so they probably have him in the outfield. No, he didn't make the list. Okay. I'll tell you, and I kind of agree with this one. Number two is Mike Schmidt. Okay. Number one was Alex Rodriguez. Alex Rodriguez. Yeah, I mean, it is. Over 500 home runs. He was the quickest of 500 home runs in the history of baseball. 
a 306 career average, won three MVPs, a batting title, 10 all-star games. Um, and he might have been more than 10. Ended up winning World Series. At the end of the day, no matter what you think of somebody like Barry Bonds or Alex Rodriguez, at the end of the day, there's probably two of the most impactful players in the history of baseball. Yeah, we're pro steroids on this podcast, I guess is what you're trying to say. I am. Like, at the end of the day, the game of baseball was more fun. You look sure. at that fucking home runs that Barry Bonds would hit into the water. You know how I many people would hit the wall in right field in San Francisco while Barry Bonds was just knocking them over that wall? And technically wasn't on the banned substance list. Yeah. So, give me Alex Rodriguez at third base, baby. I'm going to Alex Rodriguez, too. Because at the end of the day, at least we have... Let's just let's just pause the list for a second at third base okay. here for for a reason. With baseball, George, there is part of me that compared to other sports, especially where it's really hard to compare. You know the NBA nineteen fifties to now, but it's really hard to compare nineteen ten to two thousand ten. So and hard, no cameras even on most of them. Sometimes people Babe Ruth hit a six hundred foot home run in this parking lot. Like, did he or did it roll another hundred feet? Like, Let's just say we weren't watching it on HD big screens. I, was, <laughs> I, I were listening to it on the radio, and the announcer's like, "Holy shit, that was a ball!" I think Bob, Bob, I think that was six hundred and twenty. Oh, it was six hundred. Yeah, somebody in the wow. parking lot, like it landed here. Like, oh, really? Did you walk it over there? Like, what? Or did it roll to you? Like, how far did it really land? Right. Exactly. So, but still, this. <laughs> but I'm not undermining what Babe Ruth did. He's like the best. The point was less Babe Ruth and more that, like, we need some people in this generation on the list. I think Alex Rodriguez fits the bill. I, I do, too. All right. Uh, outfield is very difficult. Okay. I kind of like the way that Bleach Report did it. Instead of doing right, center, and left, they just did three, th- out- three outfields. Okay. And you want me to read you the five guys on the outfield? Sure, and I'll add any if I think it okay. needs to be added. Well, I'm going to read you the six, actually. Sorry. You had Babe Ruth, Willie Mays, and Ted Williams. Okay. And then the... Second teams were Hank Aaron, Barry Bonds, and Tyco. I would even add Griffey maybe as like a seventh. Jesus, this, that's a good list. I'd, I'd Griffey as the seventh best outfielder of all time, yeah. I'm going to start with one because we're pro steroids, and that's Barry Bonds. I will have Barry Bonds on mine too. You can't write the story of baseball. You can't go to the Hall of Fame. You can't look at the record books. The most home runs in the history of baseball, whether we like it or not, whether even if you're listening to this podcast and you say, I hate the steroid era, it's bullshit, it's an asterisk. Even with that asterisk, who has the most home runs ever? Barry Bonds. Barry. And, and what, look at his dominance compared to the era where everyone else was also taking steroids, right? Like, he was still much better than everyone else. Yeah. Like, while you look at Babe Ruth, he was dominant. There was a lot of guys on this list that I just read you that was like, career average 350, right? Exactly. Like, you said, holy shit, when I said Lou Gehrig, this average. And the next guy, oh, he batted 352. Yeah. Like, Nobody was doing what Barry Bonds did, even on steroids. Exactly. And one guy they met, missed off that list is Joe DiMaggio. I would put him up there, too. 56-game hitting streak is pretty fucking insane. But I don't know if he fits the next top. No, no, he does. you agree with Barry Bonds? I'd agree with Barry Bonds, and we're both going to agree with Babe Ruth. Yeah, I agree with Babe Ruth as well. I think you have to go somewhere now between Willie Mays, Ted Williams, and Hank Aaron, right? No offense to Ty Cobb. Yeah, and I'm going to go with... It's either Willie Mays or Ted Williams, but... You want me to read you the, what was written? I'm going to read it to you. Yeah, please do, because this is hard. Ted Williams or Willie Mays? Willie Mays is arguably the best all-around baseball player in the history of baseball. He's a prototypical five-tool player. He was the first to accumulate 3,000 hits and 500 home runs. He also sit, hit 660 career home runs, won two MVPs, appeared in 24 All-Star games, was an 11-time Gold Glove winner, and had 100-plus RBIs 10 times, scored 100-plus runs 12 times, and has a 302 lifetime batting average. All right, Ted Williams. Arguably the greatest pure hitter who ever lived. Accumulated 344 average, 521 uh, home runs, two MVPs, two-time triple crown winner, was also the last player to hit 400. He batted 406 in 1941, was 17-time all-star, 100-plus runs nine times, and 100-plus RBIs nine times. And he went to serve in World War II, came back and won an MVP after. Yeah. And Do- Joe DiMaggio's... I love Joe DiMaggio. 325, three-time MVP, but 300 home runs. Let's stick to the guys that have 500 and 600 home runs. All right, I'm going... This might be controversial, but I'm going Ted Williams. Wow, I was going to go Willie Mays. Um, you know, I'll give you Ted Williams on our list because I 
announced that Alex Rodriguez and Barry Bonds like have to be on the list for me. Okay, yeah, let's go Ted Williams and barely, barely, man. Okay, we're going with Ted Williams. Uh, they put Do- Joe DiMaggio on designated hitter with Mickey Mantle. Okay, we have, we have a DH. That's cool. Let's put uh, let's put Mickey Mantle in our DH over Joe DiMaggio. I think so. And what's you want to give me some stats here? I don't have Mickey Mantle's stats up, but I know Joe DiMaggio is there. Bleach reports designated hitter. 325 career average, 361 home runs. Should I look up Mickey Mantle? Yeah. Here's the thing. I feel like when Mickey Mantle has a great name. Yeah, with any of the guys we didn't put, like Hank Aaron and uh, Ty Cobb, you could also throw him at DH if you really wanted to. You could throw Tank Griffey Jr. on there if you want. All right. Well, this this look at pull up Ty Cobb stats because then we may have him on the list too. So Mickey Mantle batted 298, 536 home runs. Um, he hit over 100 RBIs, one, two, three, four times, and he won a M- couple MVP awards. We have one MVP for Ty Cobb, and he, but he batted 366 with 117 home runs. Not enough home runs for my DH. Yeah, we want some power in our DH. I think we give it to Joe DiMaggio. I agree. Embo, three-time MVP for Mickey Mantle. Save with DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio had a 56-game hitting streak. I That's like one record I've always wanted to see broken because I think it'd be really interesting. So let's just go with that. His record for 56 successive consecutive games hit is arguably the greatest record in all sports, is what according to Bleacher. Yeah, and I actually think it is. Like, imagine Sammy today in social media area era, if we had like someone on a 39 game hitting streak. You know so well that every day everyone's going to be tuning in. Sports at 39. We're not even at, we're still 17 games. Dude, away. 26. Imagine 20, 25. Yeah, we just hope we don't. We hit like 12 or 13 people freak out. Yeah, 56 games in a row. He got a hit. Joe DiMaggio. So Babe Ruth, what do we go? Mary Bond. And he married Marilyn Monroe. You got to get some kind of points. Like, yeah. happy hitter there. It's like the A-Rod stuff. A-Rod had, like, J-Lo and who, didn't he, uh, Madonna? No. He might have done with. No, who was it? There was somebody for Alex Rodriguez, too. I was thinking for Lawrence or Gardner? Yeah, something like that. Some yeah. some, some actress. Famous marriages or dating. Cameron Diaz. I have no idea. I mean, he's correct. Uh... Who did we go off the outfield? Babe Ruth. We went Barry Bonds and, and Ted Williams. Ted Williams and then Joe DiMaggio as um, designated hitter. Uh, pitcher. Let's go pitcher. I think it's obviously Ty, Cy Young. <laughs> well, if you have an award named after you, it probably should be. Have you looked at Cy Young's stat? He has 511 wins. He started 800 and. 15 games of 749 complete games. Yeah. If you throw 749 complete games, you get on my list. We're going Cy Young. The, na- the award's named after him. Yeah. Um, honorable mention, he's not on there yet. Uh, Shohei Otani, my big at all-time pitcher and uh, and outfielder at one point. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about him at the end here because we have to. The other ones on the list here for right and left-handed pitchers, Walter Jones was the other right-handed pitcher they had. The Left- Seahawks off in the lineman? Walter Johnson, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Walter Johnson, all right, yeah. Left-handed pitcher. Take a guess who the left-handed pitcher is. But Sandy Colfax. That's second. I'll give you a hint. His first name is Lefty. <laughs> Lefty Grove. Yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a great guy to be named the greatest left-handed pitcher ever is Lefty Grove. You know who uh, Cy Young played for? He played for the Rangers for a little bit. Cy Young? No, that's Nolan Ryan. Correct. The Cleveland Spiders. Which they should have changed the name from Indians, Spiders, instead of Guardians. I know, but that probably got heat up. So. Um, they have a relief pitcher on here, and it's Mariano Rivera, so I wanted to... All right, that. we can put him on there. Yeah. Why not? It doesn't hurt. I like Mariano. And uh, they did manager Joe McCarthy. Okay. He won seven World Series with the Yankees, the highest career winning percentage ever for manager. But I, I don't want to do managers. Me either, but that works. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, damn. That's baseball. And Love it. So we had, who did we have? Cadger? Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench. We had Lou Garrett. We had Jackie Robinson. At second. Uh, Honus Wagner. At Alex Rodriguez. Yep. Outfield, we had Babe Ruth, Barry Bonds, and Ted Williams. Yep. Joe DiMaggio. At DH. Cy Young. And Mariano Rivera. Cool. Do you think the Mariners could win 95 games with that lineup? They will somehow win 72. All right. That's what I thought too. And then let me just add this. 
if you could have one more guy on your team, it's Shohei Otani. Now, in my humble opinion, I might have even taken out Joe DiMaggio and put Shohei Otani for DH. Shohei Otani is the most complicated, like, situation because he is the best player ever. What, well, outside of Babe Ruth, maybe. We can have a utility guy, right? Every team has a utility guy. We can put Shohei Otani as our utility guy. Yeah, let's add him. Because you can't do this list without Shohei Otani. Yeah, it's like doing a... I know it's list so early, but we, we see it. I mean, what he's doing right now is so scary. And, like, if he... I mean, the Angels are basically a playoff team right now because of Shohei. I know Mike Trout's there, but Shohei is leading the league in everything. He's leading the league in home runs. RBIs. Yeah slugging percentage uh and he's also leading the league in opponent batting average when he's pitching and let's just add this this is being recorded on june 28th okay on june 27th 2023 yesterday Shohei Otani had 10 strikeouts and two home runs batting yeah i mean this is just stuff we'll never see again yeah so we couldn't really you can't really you can't put him in the outfield as like the best ever yet because he's not Barry Bonds or Babe Ruth, but and he might never get to those numbers because he came late from Japan. He's twenty eight already. Yeah, so he came late from Japan, but still those numbers are unreal. Yeah, so Shohei Otani be our utility guy, and I want to add one more guy just to mention as a Seattle kid is if he played his whole career in the United States, Ichiro might have been on this list. Yep, he might have been the Joe DiMaggio of. This generation, like, he could have had a 35-game hitting streak if he was here in his 20s. Yep. He has the most hits in a single season ever, right? 262. Yeah. Which is crazy. There's only 162 games. So, yeah, he had 100 more hits than the amount of games. Yeah. I mean, if you think about that, it's pretty <laughs> insane. To so, he yeah, averaged a hit and a half every five. More. Got, yeah, more. Half of 100 or half of 162. That would only be 220. Be- so, he was like at 2.6. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the math. I, I, I'm 262 divided by 162. Yeah. He averaged 1.6 hits per game. Cool. That's or amazing. Points. So, that means more games he had two hits than one hit. Yeah. So, each row would be my like first guy off the bench in terms of we're just talking about overall hitting. Like I, I, I can't sit there and put him as like the best – Right fielder, left fielder ever, right? And, and Ken Griffey Jr., if he stayed healthy and played his whole career in Seattle and maybe injected himself up with some steroids like Barry Bonds did, he would be pretty high up this list, too. Yeah. So, that's an idea. Ken Griffey, if you'd use steroids, you'd probably be on this list. Probably. But let's... I just wanted to add Shohei Otani and Ichiro. Both came later from Japan. Ichiro even later. Ichiro was a rookie of the year and the MVP. MVP. And the team broke the record for 162... For 116 uh, wins. 116 wins and 162 and 162 win season. Oh, my gosh. 116 wins and 162 game season. Yep. And he broke the record for most hits in the season ever. Yeah, you can't beat that. So, Shohei and Ichiro, Team Japan, you're on this list as honorable mentions for, like, Ichiro, you'd be on this list. Shohei, you're on the team. But, you, like, we yeah. just don't know where to put you right now. Exactly. You'll be You'll replace someone at some point. You can be our starting pitcher over Cy Young, maybe, because we can use you as a batter, too. Yeah, I don't know. Put you in our lineup. Yeah. God. That guy's something. Uh, it's unreal. Japanese superhero. Football? Football it is. All right. We have how many positions in football on each side? I brought up the football you can get. We can we can get lost a little bit for every position, but let's get to it here one second. All right, George. We are to the NFL. Dun, 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 dun. I wish we had like that old uh, NFL films mu- music. You know what I'm talking about? Like the NFL films one? Yeah, like yeah. I don't know. It's, it's copyright, copyright. It's like the most unneeded like music. It doesn't even fit football, but it now fits football. Yeah, and it's 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 actually beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, let's start with the easiest one ever. Tom Brady. You don't want to talk about the great. Um, George, I don't know. I was, yeah, it's Tom Brady. The runners up for our list is Otto Graham, Peyton Manning, Joe Montana, Steve Young, Aaron John Elway. Yeah, Dan Marino. Cool. Whatever. Tom Brady. Do we need to talk about him more? No. Tom Brady's Babe Ruth. He's Michael Jordan, LeBron James. The 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 list would be impossible without him. Yeah, I mean, he's not my goat. My goat. I'm tired of that. My goat. Like goat means greatest of all time. 
You can have your goal for your team, but not for football. It's not, not race. Tom Brady. All right, running back position next. Yes, running back. Oh. Well, let's see. All right, I'm I, I'm gonna guess Walter Payton, Jim Brown. Barry Sanders should be up on that list, but he didn't play long enough, and Emmett Smith. Those are like the four usual suspects. Here is the list I have right now. Barry Sanders, mm-hmm. runner-up, Jim Brown, and then the rest of them are honorable mentions are Bo Jackson, Walter Payton, and Eric Dickerson. I really do want to put Barry Sanders on there. He was the best running back. He just didn't play long. Like, he didn't break these records because he didn't play long. Barry Sanders played 10 seasons. 15,000 yards, 99 touchdown, 10-time Pro Bowler, 5-time first-team All-Pro. He, he, I feel like with Barry Sanders, he can go down as the the best running back of all time, right? You know what's interesting about that is today's day and age, if a running back plays 10 seasons, he has a short career, I had a long career. But Barry Sanders, when he retired, like, wow, he's retiring early. It's kind of crazy. And yeah, now, guys, like Ezekiel Elliott's like six years in the league. He can't, like, can't even find the team. Yeah, so uh, would you rather put Jim Brown, the late great Jim Brown, or Barry Sanders? I, I, I'm i leaning towards Barry. I, I don't think uh, that's too controversial either. So Detroit, Jim, Detroit forced him into retirement. Like Jim Brown know. played a year less. Nine seasons of 12,000 yards. He had 3,000 less yards in one year less, but he had more touchdowns for 106. Yeah, but that's not much. He also... They both played for inept franchises, Cleveland and uh, Detroit. Yeah, but, I mean, if you look at it, Barry was had two more Pro Bowls and the same amount of first-team All-Pros. I feel like Barry Sanders has to be there. Yeah, let's give Barry Sanders that. I think Barry Sanders is the greatest running back of all time. Okay, let's go Barry Sanders. All right, um, should we go wide receiver next? Yep. All right, uh, Jerry Rice is the best wide receiver. Yeah, I don't think anyone would. Now, Randy Moss might be second, but it's Jerry Rice, and his records are still nowhere near broken. At all. Yeah, in an era where they didn't pass the ball as much as they do now. Yeah, I think it's uh, a no-brainer. I mean, the only other runner-up on the list I'm looking at is Randy Moss. All right, yeah, let's just give it to Jerry Rice. Yeah, Jerry Rice played 13 Pro Bowl seasons, but he played... 20 years and then of her 19 years at 300 games, 1,500 receptions, 22,000 yards, 197 receiving touchdowns of the 10 rushing touchdowns. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's Jerry Rice, uh, all time great Seattle Seahawk, too. Yeah. yeah. One of the best ever. <laughs> all right, offensive lineman. Help so me tight end first. Oh, t- I forgot about tight end. It's Tony Gonzalez for now. Like, is it Travis Kelsey? There's three guys I'd even put before Travis Kelsey. Gronk. Gronk is number one on the ESPN list. He got 23 out of the 50 votes. Antonio Gates. Number two was uh, Tony Gonzalez. And then Shannon Sharp and Antonio Gates. Kellen Winslow was second. Not junior. No. The dad. And then also receiving votes with one each was Mike Ditka, Antonio Gates, Ozzie Newman, and Shannon Sharp. Travis Kelsey's going to get up there and might become the greatest tight end of all time, but are you going to give it to Gronk or are you going to give it to Tony Gonzalez? See, I'm a Gronk guy. I'm a Gronk guy too. And I think that one underrated part of Tom Brady's career is having Gronk that people don't even, you know, we don't consider enough is that it's not just Tom Brady. Like he had, yeah, he might not, he had Randy Moss for a year or two. He didn't, yeah, he had Julian Edelman's, not like the craziest receiving core ever. He had Rob Gronkowski. Yeah, that was his like, like when you say Rice in Montana, Elway and Sharp, you say Brady and Gronk. Yeah, I think it would have helped for Tony Gonzalez too if it wasn't like, you know, a little bit played for. Yeah, like the Falcons and the the Chiefs, right? Like I, I think with the thing with Gronk is one thing to also consider is he won those what five, four or five, four Super Bowls maybe I think or three in New England. I think three. I think two in New England, one in Tampa. Okay, and one in the, that was the. I think the thing that puts him above Tony Gonzalez is that the guy retired pretty much, went and joined Tom Brady in Tampa Bay, and won another Super Bowl with Tom Brady and was still a dominant force despite his injuries, despite yeah. what he's going through. All right, yeah, it's, it's Gronk, man. I like that. And everyone loves Gronk. Like, no one's going to be rare to find someone who looks like, like Gronk, well, fuck that guy. Yeah, I, I have to say it's Gronk over Tony Gonzalez. And I think Travis Kelsey might surpass. Yeah, he might. But and, still, I'm really. underrated one, Shannon Sharp. Yep, Shannon Sharp. Like, I know people... 
you know, he, he received one vote on this list, but if you consider winning Super Bowls on multiple teams, like the Gronk factor. True. Like Broncos and Ravens, that that's I forgot that he won a championship on the Ravens. Did he win one of the Ravens, or did you just say he won one of the Ravens? And I, I made that up. And I'm like, yeah, he did win one of the Ravens because you said it. I'm looking it up here. Yeah, please do, because I think you're right, but like, I'm not like absolutely certain about that. Yeah. He won a uh, eight-time Pro Bowl. A two-time Super Bowl champ. I think they were both with the Broncos in 97 and 98. Uh... I'm pretty sure he's won three Super Bowls, dude. So maybe it was maybe it was to the Ravens. Hold on. I, I don't know if I'm crazy. I mean and three times Super Bowl champ. So then he did. He won one of the Ravens because he won two the Broncos only won two during his time, so he must have had a third one of the Ravens. What year did the Ravens win there? Two thousand one or ish. One or ish? Yeah, one or ish. Uh, he two thousand, two thousand one. Yeah, he, so, yeah, he was on the 2001 ball court. Okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah, cool. I didn't know that. So three Super Bowls. All right, three Super Bowls. So this, this kid, I love Shannon Sharp. By the way, yeah. come on the pod, bro. Please. All right, uh, offensive lineman. Could you help me out here? Because I don't know how we're gonna. We got a lot. We have Anthony Munoz at tackle is one of the options here. You have uh, at guard. We have Larry Allen. That one I God, that I we all know that's him. center Mike Webster. Okay. I think we gotta go Larry Allen just because it's the most recognizable one too. Yeah, and uh, we're not gonna spend too much time talking about offensive linemen because no one spends a lot of time talking about offensive linemen. Here's the thing. If you talk to Tom Brady, the GOAT of football, mm-hmm. it was like give me your best offensive lineman ratings ever. He might not even list the top five guys and no, he might just list his five guys. Yeah. He might even know like he might even he might forget one of the guys. Like, oh yeah, like he might even mentor mention like some Hall of Famers like Walter Jones or yeah. whoever. But Larry Allen. Let's give it to Larry Allen. I like that. I think it's the most recognizable name. Yeah, we all know who he is. Yeah, let's go with Larry Allen. All right. Uh, defense? Defense it is. All right. Lawrence Taylor at defensive the line in general. He's the best defensive football player of all Not time. going J.J. Watt? No, we're not. I mean, J.J. Watt's great. He's up there. He won MVP's like Defensive Player of the Year's award. But, like, no, no, it's, it's Lawrence Taylor. I mean, Bill Belichick even said it recently that he had – the pleasure and the privilege of coaching the best offensive player in history and Tom Brady and the best defensive player in history in Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor. Okay. So we're using, we're going Lawrence Taylor. Yeah. Linebacker. I have one in mind, but read the list. Or do you want to say it and tell me if he's on the say, list? Say who you got. Dick Buttkiss is on the list and Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis is number one. Okay. Joe Green, number two. Meet Joe, mean Joe Green. Deacon Jones, Alan Page, John Randall, and Warren Sapp. That's different. Warren Sapp is a defensive tackle. Yeah, I don't know why he's... Oh, sorry. I'm on defensive tackle. What am I doing? Okay, that's... Okay, edge rusher is Lawrence Taylor. Okay. We got that. Linebacker, Ray Lewis. Dick Butkus. Dick Butkus, Mike Singletary, Jack Lambert. There's a junior Seau, Bill George. But I think the obvious answer is Ray Lewis. Yeah, and he's a, we've watched him play. Like, no offense to Dick Buckus, I, I didn't ever watch you play. Uh, and this is not baseball. I'm not talking about. I can't just look at stats and say Babe Ruth is the greatest of all time. Yeah, I, uh, but we have to go Ray Lewis. Yeah, and, and by the way, any uh, defensive line, Aaron Donald's close. Oh yeah, he's definitely close. I know he's interior. But if we were going to go interior, it's Aaron Donald, and then Edge is Lawrence Taylor. Oh, why don't we do that? Okay. Interior, Aaron Donald. All right. Edge, Lawrence Taylor. Yeah. And linebacker, we're going with... Uh, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis. Cornerback. You, you can get I'm it. going with Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders, Charles Woodson, Darrell Revis, Rod Woodson. All right. I'm going Deion. And Deion, be- Deion. And when you, when you go to impact, like I feel like sometimes impact makes a... Huge difference. Huge, huge difference. And when you talk about impact, Dion's number one. Oh, yeah. I mean, Dion, what's he doing? He had the surgery recently, too, which, like, sucks. Hopefully it gets good. But, I mean, he's now a coach at a Pac-12 school, which if you told me that when he was a football player and he was, like, doing all his crazy stuff and, like, showboating and stuff, I never thought he'd be a college football coach. And now he is. Like, this is an amazing, like, wave of him having a second act in his life. 
Did he play two sports? Yeah, and he played major league yeah. baseball. So who else? He's the Bo first, Jackson. Yeah, he's the first person in history of the world to play an NFL game and a major league baseball game on the same day. Yeah, because he played for the Braves and the Falcons. But the yeah, he played a day game for the Braves and suited up for Sunday Night Football. <laughs> like, it, dude, like if you think about that, that might be like the greatest athlete ever. Yeah, no, no, it's it, it's sick. He's. I sick. know we talk about greatest athletes ever. People always like Michael Jordan, LeBron James. Tom Brady, Tiger Woods, Michael Phelps, because they're so storied in their position. But, like, if you consider the fact that he suited up for a day game for the Braves and a night game for the Falcons. Or vice versa. Yeah, whatever it was. He played two major league sports. For the Atlanta Braves, a storied franchise, and the Atlanta Falcons, maybe no Super Bowls, but they're a well-known fucking franchise. Yeah, and it was crazy. He had an interception for a touchdown, punt return for a touchdown, and hit four home runs that day. I made all that part up. I was say, did he get a hit that day? <laughs> Not quite a lot idea. <laughs> but I know, I know he played both, and that's good enough for me. Yeah, but it, it, it's Deion Sanders. All right, safety. Is it uh, Rod Woodson? No, it is Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott. Uh, you know Ronnie Lott's story, right? I don't, but I know there's a Ronnie Lott award in college. There's a story. Yeah, there's a story. Uh, during the Super Bowl, he hurt his finger so bad, they told him that like at halftime, Either you got to cut it off or you can't play the rest of the game. And then you told him just fucking cut it off. Yeah, like I'm playing, bitches. Yeah, I'm not cutting it off. But bro, I'm going back in my house with my finger and sitting out the year. Yeah. But I still understand why they'd have to cut it off. I can just play with him and like deal with it later. But whatever. Or at least risk it. Or risk it, yeah. Yeah, like let's see what happens after the game. You have to cut it off after the game, cut it off. But yeah. if not, like let me keep my finger. They won that game. That would suck if you cut his finger and they lost the game. I'm going to tell you, the other guys on the list are Ed Reed, Brian Dawkins, and Troy Palomaro. Okay. Ed Reed is up there. Uh, Ed Reed's up there. Uh, of our generation, it's Ed Reed. Yeah, but um, who did we say it was? Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a very arguable one, right? Yeah, do you want to just throw a kick returner in there, Devin Hester, just so we give give a diff- one of those guys some love? Yeah, Devin Hester is definitely the kick return, right? Yeah, and then the kicker? Adam Benetieri. Really? How about the guy? Well, it's Justin Tucker right now. He's. Okay, I'll tell you the votes. If okay. You want to know. Yeah. So we had re- special teams with Devin Hester, with second being um, Deion Sanders. Okay. Gail Sayers, Matthew Slater. He doesn't do like, but he's just all around. We know Matt. Matt he's on the Patriots, mm-hmm. another Patriots guy. Kicker, we have Adam Benetieri, 22 out of the 50 votes, 21 votes for. Justin Duck. Okay. Who do you have? Adam Vinatieri has a more storied career, but Justin Tucker is probably the best kicker of all time. Yeah, let's go with Justin Tucker. Who's somebody who, who, right now? Yeah, it's still active. Right um, and punter is Ray Guy. He was on the, uh, he was third on the special teams. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, he's the best punter ever. There's the Ray Guy Award. So pretty simple there. So punter, Ray Guy, kicker, Justin Tucker, and Kick returner, Devin Hester. Yeah. I do remember when I was uh, little, this is elementary school, uh, there was this girl in my class, and she was originally from Mississippi. She had just moved to Seattle. And, like, I don't know if she had a relationship, like, like her family, had, like, were friends with him, or they, she, because he is from Mississippi, or I don't know what it is, but she was obsessed with Ray Guy, and it was, like, I'd argue sports with him. She's like, Ray Guy's the best football player of all time. Like, I still remember that. Like, he's a punter. He's a punter. He's like, no, he's the best player of all time. That's what my parents say. Well, <laughs> they must have something about Ray Guy that they love. Yeah, they, she loved Ray Guy because her parents loved Ray Guy. I wonder if she had a Ray Guy jersey. How many, how many of those have sold? I don't know, but, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's just the name Guy on the back. I like that. All right, Ray Guy. You made a shout out on him. Yeah, he did. Uh, I think that's everyone. I want to do two more. Okay. I'm going to go back to basketball for a second. Coach. Oh, oh, Phil Jackson. Okay. I can't argue. Yeah. Who's the next one? Baseball, we don't want to do. We already talked about that. Uh, and then football coach. Bill Belichick. Is it or is it... Uh, um, help me, George. Packers coach. Vince Lombardi? Yeah. Which one is the greatest coach of all? I think it's harder to win in this era, this many Super Bowls, and he has the most Super Bowls ever. So this Brady Belichick post each other thing. Brady's way on top right now. But yeah, that's cool. But like, still, he's still the best. All right, I think I'll agree with you. I'm not gonna disagree. Bill Belichick, greatest coach. Player. All right, 
Who's the greatest owner in the history of pro sports? Okay, this is a good one. Um, I mean, if we want to go families, you could argue like the Bus family for the Lakers. Okay, that's an argument because they had the '90s to 2000. Yeah, GD's not that great, but I have her dad. They, she won a championship two years ago, three years. True. Ago. So, like, as much as we people hate on Jeannie Buzz, she won the championship with uh, LeBron James and brought him to L.A. Okay, fair. The Buzz family had the Kobe Shaq era and the Magic Kareem, Jerry West. I mean, the Buzz family. The Buzz family's the number one in basketball. Yeah. And it, football. Right, like, who else would be on that list? No, no, it's, it's easy. It's the Buzz family. I mean, we can say Mark Cuban. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know owners. Yeah. Football. It could be Robert Kraft. It could be Robert Kraft. It could be the Rooney family with the Steelers. Let's go Rooney family. Okay. They never lose. They never have losing seasons. They never change coaches. Coach and they never have controversy. Yeah, never change coaches. You have a problem with a guy like... They made the craziest guy in NFL history, Antonio Brown, normal for like five years. Yep. Le'Veon Bell was insane. He was normal for five years. And then they leave and they just went haywire. Okay, perfect. That's easy. So whatever they're doing, whatever coaches, whatever personnel they have inside the organization, they're keeping people sane. Perfect. I love that. And in baseball, I think it's easy. Yankees owners? George Steinbrenner, yeah. yeah. They still own the team, the Steinbrenner or something. Yes, the Suns do. The they're, not, they're not as like involved as his dad. If only he didn't trade Jay Buter to the Mariners. He had 30 homers and 100 RBIs, Sammy. That's two podcasts in a row. Uh, Jay Buter, who, Seinfeld. Who would have thought? Yeah, one was our Seattle podcast. We had a Seinfeld reference. Uh, the same one. Same one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's our list. All right. Perfect. I love it. It was a fun list, actually. It was kind of fun building that. That was good. I uh, feel more informed, and I hope the viewers do, too. I, do, I hope so. That's all we got. Sports on Tap Brothers podcast. I'm Sammy, as always. And I'm George. And uh, make sure you find us everywhere. At the Sports on Tap on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you find us. And at YouTube.com slash Sports on Tap. If you type in at the Sports on Tap on YouTube, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, the video, all our clips, our shorts, our cut-up clips. For our YouTube channel, I just want people to know, like, you're going to see a lot of clips that are not podcast-related, too. Right. A lot of fun clips, guessing games, trivia. So... Make sure you check out the podcast or the podcast page, I guess, on YouTube as well. Yeah, we'd really appreciate it, guys. Much love and uh, enjoy the podcast every single time. Stay tuned. Next week, another podcast comes out every single week. You got to like and subscribe to be part of it. You have to. So it's the only way you can do it. Click the button. Be part of a family with Uncle George and Uncle Sam. Thanks for being part of the Sports on Tap fam. And George, you know what we like to say. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Peace.